Hello Sky News Facebook audience. You're joining us in a clinic in Chelsea. And this is a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. And to explain what that is, I'm gonna invite Tim in. Come on in, Tim. I want you to explain to our audience what we've got going on here, because it looks a bit space, space age, doesn't it? It does a bit, yeah. <clears throat> it's essentially um, administering oxygen under pressure so what it does is it means that your body absorbs more oxygen than, than it usually would, up to 15 times more than at normal at, uh, atmospheric pressure. Uh, so what we do is we administer oxygen via a mask, um, generally for about an hour. Okay. And at the moment, we've got young Jake in there, 13-year-old Jake. And I should say that hyperbaric oxygen has been rumored to be a good treatment or therapy for celebrities, sports stars, biohackers. But tell us why Jake is in the tank today. And so it's a great alternative therapy to complement other, other things as well. Um, Dr. Pender's probably better to go into more detail of why Jake is in today. Um, but it's a very good alternative therapy that uh, assists other things. Okay, just before we move over to speak to Dr. Pender, just give us an overview of the claimed health benefits of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So, yeah, administering more oxygen um, via hyperbaric medicine essentially helps the immune system work as it should. It, it's, it makes the body work as it should, essentially. Um, it, it works with the red blood cells and your white blood cells as well. Um, and it gives mental clarity. You find that your brain is a bit sharper and also helps with your energy. It really is a, a very good complementary therapy. And of course, I should point out that you own the business and you own the tank. Yeah. So, you, so you would say that, wouldn't you? <laughs> but let's have a chat with uh, Dr. Pender. Can we come over to you right over there? Come and have a chat with you, Robert. Just leaning over Jake here. Now, you're keeping an eye on what's going on because exactly, yes. this young man's having a very special kind of treatment, isn't he? That's right, um, Jake. Um, unfortunately for this young lad, he's got a brain tumour and a spinal tumour. And what we are doing is giving them this extra oxygen um, to build up his immune system, help him to fight the cancer. Uh, cancer tumours um, actually thrive in a low oxygen environment, uh, but when you go into an oxygen chamber, then th there's more oxygen dissolved into the blood, into the hemoglobin, and into the blood plasma, um, also into your lymph fluids. So the area that has been starved of oxygen uh, suddenly get an increase in oxygen and cancer tumours don't like this. They actually grow and spread in a low oxygen environment. So by giving the hyperbaric oxygen treatment, we find this very useful as part of the treatment, like there's chemotherapy, radiotherapy, it, it actually works alongside these other therapies. And has that been proven? There is quite a lot of clinical trials on the go just now and very well documented that uh, this works. I think Dr. Robinson recently from King's uh, proved that this, um, he's a radiologist and had done MRI scans of tracing tumours in low oxygen and watching them spread and then he did another trial um, with more oxygen and seeing how the, the tumours did not spread. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to remind our audience where we are. We're at a clinic in London. This is a hyperbaric oxygen tank. It's uh, being used for various health benefits. But right now, young Jake is in there. He's got a brain tumour. And I'm just going to say hello to his dad over here, Adrian, because I'm just really curious to know, um, what made you opt for hyperbaric oxygen therapy for your son? Well, Jake went through the traditional um, National Health Service treatment for, for his tumour. Um, it's been with him for a long time, since 2012. It, uh, the result of Jake's surgery when he first had a tumour in his spinal cord left him in a wheelchair. Um, after very, over, over the years, his condition worsened and Jake, at mo as it stands at the moment, is quadriplegic because the tumour is spread up to the brain. Jake received last year radiotherapy treatment um, at the Royal Marsden Hospital and post that treatment, the tumours continued to grow um, onto the, into, the, into the brain stem, spread across the brain, and in fact Jacob is now um, at home because he cannot have no more treatment. The uh, hospital have effectively just said Jake will die, um, and he is now under palliative care. You've obviously got a lot of faith in this treatment. 
Oh gosh, yes, yes. Uh, because that the, the, the treatment from the uh, that was available to us from the hospital is so limited, it's either surgery, radiotherapy, or chemotherapy. Um, it, my, my wife first started exploring alternatives um, and complementary. Say hello to the wife. Hello, Hi. wave hello. Hi. Hello. And as a result of that, one of the uh, treatments that we came across was the hyperbaric and the. Um, we, 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 we spoke with uh, Dr. Pender, we met with him last year, and Jake's commenced treatment uh, in the summer of last year, and the difference has been fantastic. Uh, Jake's been taking off a lot of the drugs that are on, which, which we believe were causing him other problems, uh, and we're, we're, we're back here again now, and we're, we're ready to, to, and Jake's ready to battle on, and we're getting uh, improvements you know, constantly. So. Thank you. Thank you for telling us that. And we should also point out that you're getting these sessions for free. Is that right? Well, the, 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 like I say, there are some very, very generous people out there who we know a lot that we don't know. And it's from the support of these people that have enabled Jake to give him a much better chance in life and um, to do what a normal first senior old should do. Not that, you know, he, he should be out there. So. Well, thank you, Adrian. We're probably going to come back to you in a moment. Um, Facebook audience, if you've got any questions for the doctor, for Tim, for Jake's dad, Adrian, just pop your questions in the comment section below. We're getting quite a few in here. Can I come to you, Dr. Rob, with some questions? Um, we're getting one, let, asking one here. As an MS sufferer, I've used this. It's amazing, especially for energy that's a good compliment there uh, Joey Bird asks about the benefits for survivors of tonsil cancer so is it beneficial for survivors of cancer yes it is um, obviously a great advantage for survivors of tonsil um, cancer mainly because you're building up your immune system you're building up your whole uh, energy and keeps you in peak, peak, peak condition uh, for MS is well documented the benefits for MS patients. Anita Fulton says, "How widespread is this treatment? You know, how easily available is it?" Um, there are two um, NHS facilities in London, uh, but they really only deal with uh, the bends for divers. Um, what is that? Is that where it, this originated? This kind of treatment, the bends. Yes, it's probably developed from there, but it goes back to uh, the 1800s was the first uh, chamber uh, was uh, built. And it's really started probably in the late 1960s that outside the, di the diving world, um, other treatment areas have developed and been researched. I've got another question here from Narinda. Is it good for diabetes? Yes, um, there is some good evidence and clinical trials on treating diabetes. Um, if you go on and Google on the web, uh, hyperbaric medicine and diabetes, there's quite a lot of uh, papers there backing this up. Okay. Um, would this help brittle asthma sufferers, says Joanne Bennett? Oh, but this is this is this is a very interesting one. You see, what happens when you've got arthritis? You've got a lot of edema or swelling around the joints. Um, when you've got swelling around the joints, that restricts the circulation getting to those joints, um, and so again, you've come to a low oxygen environment. So when you go into the oxygen chamber, virtually under pressure, that edema, that swelling is moved from the joint and you get a greater circulation to the joint, hence relieving the pain and the discomfort. Wonderful. We're going to come back to you in a second. I just want to go and speak to Tim. We've got some more questions from viewers. Uh, how much does it cost for a course? So the course depends on your condition. The single treatment is £160 for an hour, um, with an initial consult is £199 uh, for the initial appointment and the session. With Dr. Pender. And are you seeing a lot of healthy, well people coming for this, just to, to what rejuvenate, recharge? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my myself, I found out about hyperbaric um, to help with my performance, to have a clearer mind and more energy, which is why I opened the clinic in London, because there was nothing else like it. And um, we find a lot of performance athletes, um, Ironmen as well, 
as well as uh, city traders, city boys and things needing more energy, sharper mind and um, generally just optimal health. So there's a real range of people with health conditions and um, wanting to be optimal. Okay, Adrian, you, you should know, and Emma, we're getting some wonderful messages to Jake on the, me on the uh, Facebook comments wow. here. Keep those messages coming in, guys. It's really good to see them, and you can watch the video back later on the Sky News Facebook page and see them. Um, but Dr. Penza, let me come back to you because we're getting more medical questions here. Um, is it any good for MS sufferers from Anthony Rothwell? Yes, um, as well documented MS, uh, Professor Philip James is one of the leading uh, researchers in treating MS, and then Dr. Paul uh, Harsh uh, from the USA, and then the late um, Richard Newbar, who was a neurologist. It's well documented that um, hyperbaric oxygen has very positive effects for MS patients. Now, how long will Jake be in the tube for? Jake is in today for um, one hour, um, but we can treat him for a longer period, up to up to two hours. Um, but at the beginning, uh, with this new chamber, it's the first time in this new chamber, um, then one hour, we're just monitoring how he's going on. He's very relaxed and it's looking very good. Yeah. And uh, how often will he have to come for these? We would like to do um, up to three times per week. Um, with the, the, the seriousness of his illness, we want to give him maximum benefit. As it's quite a, a sacrifice on the parents uh, coming, and I've got to hold my hands up to parents who have children so sick. Um, these are the unsung heroes, not ours. They are the unsung heroes. And, and for the other, other doctors who claim that there aren't enough studies or broad-scale studies to support these theories, I mean, I, what do you say to those? Where do you start? Um, if you look at any medicine, any drugs, there's got to be a start somewhere. Um, if um, penicillin wasn't uh, started somewhere, then uh, what would happen with infection? There is a lot of studies now, and sometimes um, in the medical field we can be closed books. We are stuck to tradition, um, but there is enough evidence now out and about or to take up and uh, take notes. We have referrals from um, consultants, we have referrals from GPs, so th they're beginning now to open up and see that it works. So is it beginning to be available on the NHS? Um, there are some treatments in the NHS, like uh, problem wounds, um, like for the diabetic leg ulcer, um, that can be uh, covered under NHS. Wonderful, thank you. And just finally, um, Adrian, Adrian's actually talking to Jake via the intercom system there. If you can see what he's doing. Yeah, that's how he talks to Jake. I know because I had a go on this tank earlier and I was very confused when I couldn't hear anybody. So it's quite comforting to uh, have the intercom. Adrian, did you have a go in the tank before Jake had a go? Uh, not, not in this tank, but I have been in a tank with Jacob before. Um, before Jacob deteriorated into the quadriplegia, um, we, we were, and we first started working with, with Dr. Rob, we had a, a chamber that he could sit in, and I would go and sit in with him as well. So, um, yeah, we yeah. would both be sat there with our masks on and um, feeling the benefits from Did it. he find it a bit scary initially? Um, yeah, I think we both did at first, you know, the, the ears popping, it's a bit like going up in an airplane, I suppose, is the best way to, to discuss it, but once you're in there, there's no, there was no other feeling, you, you just sat there with the mask on and, um, you know, it, it, it's, uh, but obviously Jake was getting the benefit of it, benefit out of it. And he gets to play his computer games while he's in there. Yes, that's, that's, that's one of the things, yeah, he enjoys, so we, we're just trying to give um, eye signals to mum um, to play the games. And, uh, How long has he got left in this session now? Uh, about half an hour or so, is it? 20 minutes, 20 oh, minutes, yeah. Um, I just want to say thank you for letting us in to see this session. It's a, it's a very personal situation and you let us in, and not only us, but the, all the Facebook audience for Sky News as well. And thanks, Facebook audience, for all your questions. We're going to say bye-bye now. Join us again next time. Bye-bye.